So hello listeners, this is uh, Coach Dawn, and as always, I am so excited to bring another episode of Real Talk for Coaches, and uh, this is our, what, this is now February, so this is our second episode for the year, and you know, what better thing to talk about than sex for February in honor of Valentine's Day for all of you wonderful people who celebrated Valentine's Day, whether you celebrate it as an individual, a single person, a polyamorous person, or a married person, doesn't matter. If you celebrate it, who, who do you? So we are going to talk about sex tonight. And in particular, we're going to talk about coaching around intimacy and sex. And I am so excited to have Miss Coach Joy Boneman, am I saying that right? Boneman? Actually, my last name is Gideon. I just got Gideon. Yes. <laughs> oh, congratulations. Yes, thank you. I'm happy Woo! about it. He's so cool. We survived the pandemic together, so I figured it was safe for us. Okay. Right. Might as well do it, right? <laughs> I love it. So I'm excited to have Coach Joy on. She's going to tell you about herself. And before we get into it first, uh, we have hit the 50,000 listeners mark. So I'm excited. Thank you for listening, everybody. Um, Also, remember in March, we got our mindfulness coach training starting and we have our cultural sensitivity coaching training starting. So make sure you sign up. It's only four sessions, you guys, four sessions. You get a a certificate of completion and they earn you six CCEs toward your credentials if you are an ICF coach. Um, Yeah, so that's about all the cleaning house that I'm going to do tonight. So again, thank you for listening. We love you. And uh, we're going to get into this because I think this is an amazing topic. I'm excited about this topic. Um, and I do feel like we, we, first of all, we need to talk about sex a little bit more. Um, and I really do want to bridge this gap about sex and how you can coach around sex because sometimes you don't need a therapist. Sometimes maybe it's just, you know, like myself, I've been married for like how many years now? All oh, uh, 29 years this year, 29 years. And you know what? Sometimes things is like, hmm, we did this, we did this, we did that. What can we do to spice things up? That's not necessarily therapy, right? So we're going to talk about that. So Coach Joy, tell us about yourself. Tell us, tell the listeners who you are, what you do. Well, I'm Joy with an I because though that's my parents, you know. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but I like that spelling though. I do like that. I will give them credit for being creative. I will. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually owned a wellness company where I was hand making CBD infused self-care items where I was making like with body butters and nice. bath bombs and, and things like that in order to communicate the idea of self-care. Yep. And the more I talked to my customers, the more I realized that nobody knew what self-care really was. Mm-hmm. And they were kind of guessing based on everything they read. Oh, well, it's supposed to be face mask, right? And I was like, but do you like that? You know what I mean? (laughs) And then it slowly morphed into this thing where I was giving advice and walking people through self-care and really how to do it for themselves. And um, previous psychology and education major, um, I left school after my mom got sick, so I didn't Mm. finish, but it was one of those things where like, I kept learning, I stayed in the know, I kept reading Mm -hmm. and I did some stupid stuff in between that (laughs) (laughs) found my way. Um, and then it just turned into being able to serve my community the way I had always wanted to. So it was like passion and studying at like lined up at this perfect moment where I was able to really focus on the black and indigenous community and say like self-care wellness coaching that's that's an option for you too from somebody right. who looks like you <laughs> right and, and as I know you because you we talked a little bit offline and you said you know you do your research and you see like I am like I always do my research and you know and you know that's a very important thing to me I really do believe in seeing diversity in the coaching industry and there's a lot of science behind um you are more likely to get a certain type of care 
when you see someone that looks like you, when you have a therapist or a coach or a doctor, your more your mortality changes, it increases, right? Uh, yeah. your, your, so there's a certain cultural component of understanding. So yes, I, I believe in it. So I'm glad you mentioned <laughs> that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, sex is one of those things that like naturally comes up when you're doing a lot, especially I do coaching from a holistic standpoint. So it's not just about self-care. It's not just about eating right. It's about the whole shebang. It's about, are you happy with your career? Are your finances in order? Have you cleaned your house today? Have you cleaned out your phone today? Right. And so part of that physical self-care is sex. It is intimacy. And I started finding that most people, one, didn't know sex and intimacy are actually very different. Yes, they are. (laughs) Yes, they are. They're so different. And then they didn't know how to communicate their wants and needs if they knew what they were in the first place. Thank you. It was one of those things where it became natural, where it was like, well, yeah, I do holistic coaching because and sex and intimacy is part of holistic coaching. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I'm glad you said that because um, I, I have something called the trilateral being, you know, is mind, body, spirit, uh, personal, social, uh, you know, the whole gamut of because we are we're one with so many different aspects of everything. And yes. you're right. And it's funny because I talk to a lot of like executive coaches and business coaches and they have come to say things like, well, my client did come to me about a personal matter or they want to talk about sex and I didn't feel equipped. And I'm like, but we're coaches. We can coach around anything. Anything. Right. Right. You know, and, and, and so we're going to talk about that. That's part of some of the questions and and you and I are going to share, because I do think it's important that we take a holistic approach to it. Because if an executive, a CEO, a VP come to you and they're not happy with their marriage, if sex is not great, right? Maybe they're, even Mm -hmm. if they're single and they're not having good sex, right? Even if it's good sex with themselves, Right? Yeah. How are they going to do well at work if they're frustrated? Right? right? <laughs> we need to be. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yes. No, it's so true. It's just like, yes, like sex really bleeds into everything else, everything. whether you're having it or not. Or not. It, right? <laughs> yes. it doesn't really matter. Sex is part of everybody's life, you know, and I understand pansexuals and asexuals and still sex is part of the conversation. And if you can't voice that, like, I don't really want to have sex, that's going to be awkward. (laughs) Very (laughs) um, And thank you. Thank you. And that is a great thing that you said, because there's nothing wrong if you are an asexual person or you're not a person who has a lot of sex, right? And that's just how you're (laughs) wired and that's okay. But being able to communicate that with the person you're in a relationship with so yes. that you guys can come up with a plan together right and what it's that so would look deeper. like yeah it's so much deeper and it I, I'm sorry I just got really excited I was like yes if the CEO is not having a fulfilling sex life he is he or she yep. might have a stronger, more aggressive personality. And it's more about frustration. Yes. It has nothing to do with performance at work. It's exactly. everything to do with what's going on in the back of their mind. So if we're just like, oh, uh, you know, figure yeah. it out, buddy. <laughs> yeah, exactly, I mean? exactly, <laughs> exactly. And so my first question, because you hit it on the head and as the first question for you is that, you know, people don't understand the difference between sex and intimacy. So how would you coach someone coming to you who didn't know the difference between the two? Sex is physical. That's, that's the difference. Sex is physical and sex is different based on everybody's definition, right? Some people consider oral copulation as not quite sex, but for me, I think that's sex, right? Right, right, right. May or may not be sex, but it's a physical act. It's a physical, you know, you can have sex without intimacy. Exactly. When I stand, that's, that's sex. Yes, that's, that's sex without intimacy. Really, exactly. Yeah. Intimacy is about emotions. It's about vulnerability. It's about authenticity, mm-hmm. right? In, intimacy is what most of us seek through the act of sex. 
without realizing that intimacy can be found in friendships and partnerships and coworkers. There's a level of intimacy in all of these relationships that you have with your, with yeah. other people outside of yourself and yourself. Exactly. So, True. Right? So exactly. I say sex is physical and then in- intimacy is the emotional the side. Emotional, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. That's exactly. the difference. <laughs> exactly. And so when we, t- when we, when we bridge this with coaching, right, mm-hmm. because I know it, we want to make sure as coaches, we don't cross the therapy line. Right. right. And so right. with that being said, how would you describe sex and intimacy coaching? I think it's kind of the same, right. When you're coaching, coaching versus therapy, where therapy is very, retrospective. It's why did I, you know, not necessarily just why did I feel this way, but really accepting the feelings and the circumstances around that and fixing Mm -hmm. the emotional ties to maybe a traumatic event surrounding Mm -hmm. sex. Whereas coaching is more about solutions. It's like, well, I want to voice, I I feel uncomfortable about this thing, right? Mm -hmm. And I use a framework of shadow work. I do a lot of shadow work. And so it's, it's a fine line of understanding the root cause and figuring out how to integrate that and moving forward. Whereas therapy is really about the answers, right? Mm -hmm. Why do I feel this way? What do I do with this? And, you know, I like to work with clients who've already been through therapy. So the emotional aspect therapy is really like long-term. This is, Mm -hmm. they can diagnose sexual complications. Like if you have a different, you know, if there's any kind of sexual mental health issues, they diagnose those problems and they treat those problems long-term. Whereas we're taking a situation or maybe an opinion and we are looking at this from a very non-clinical. Yeah, Yeah, non-clinical. Non-clinical. clinical Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And we're looking at this from a a very, still objective perspective. Of course. We're looking at this the whole way around and saying, well, what do we want to do with this information? And what does that really mean for you, right? So- I have a client who has had some sexual traumas. They've gone through their therapy, but they want to understand how to build this level of intimacy past that. Right, and right, so right. We ask, what does intimacy mean to you? What is important? What do you need to get out of the intimacy? And what do you want to get out of the sex act? And then we start mm-hmm. building language around what they want so they can feel empowered to make those decisions. Am I comfortable with this? Right, if right. I am uncomfortable, why am I uncomfortable? And can I fix that? Do I want to? Right. right, right. Even though I want to, and it's okay if I don't. Yeah, it's okay if I don't. Right. We're just empowering you to make a, a more decision. Of we're just empowering you to make decisions around your wants and needs. We're here to empower you and give you some inspect. You know, some some advice on like, hey, you know, that makes you uncomfortable. What do you think would work best for you? Like, you don't. I don't. I don't like PDA that much. Okay. And so there's like a level of intimacy that I'm willing to have with my husband in public. Like if you grab my butt, I'm going to yell at you. Like, what are you doing? I'm in public right now. I'm very right. uncomfortable with that. Right. So right. we had to have a discussion about what, why that was important for him and why I felt uncomfortable and finding a middle ground. Okay. And so a couple of things that I, I do, you know, because a lot of the listeners I have are ICF coaches, right? Right. And so I also want to help with just so that they will also understand some of the languages. So we're definitely on the same page and I get it. So very clear that sex and intimacy coaching is not clinical. We don't diagnose any types of dysfunction or pathology, if you right. will. Right. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and that's the real, the biggest clarity. And like you said, our goal is to empower you through mm-hmm. it, through asking you powerful questions and getting deeper into what makes this important to you. And I thought you great, that was a great analogy. And w- what makes this something that you have a challenge with and yeah. where's the happy ground between both of you. Right. right? Exactly. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Good. Yeah. Awesome. Good. <laughs> sex is one of those topics too that's really complicated for a lot of people i mean right. as society teaches us very early what sex is taboo. supposed to look like yeah. yeah and it becomes taboo and i've never been one to like 
care about taboo. The more taboo it is, the more likely I was to bring it up and just be like, so tell me what you think about this thing then. Yes, and yes. you know, and most people were like, what is going on? Like, yes. why are you asking me this? But sex shouldn't be taboo. We should be discussing it because there's so many different levels to sex and intimacy. Yes. That if we don't have a conversation around them, how could we how, how are we ever going to gain perspective about what's going on and what questions we should be aware of, right? Like if I don't know that BDSM ex even exists, I've never been exposed to that. And then somebody is like, spank me and call me daddy. You know what I mean? <laughs> you might be just like, what is going on? <laughs> you know? So so tell people what BDSM stands for just in case they're not familiar. I can see people now, where's my phone? Where's Google? <laughs> what BDSM? So explain to our listeners. Uh, so BDSM is, okay, so I uh, think about dominant submissive acts. Yep. Yeah, that's where, you know, it's the sadist, masochist. Mm -hmm. uh, B, B and D stand for something, but S and M is sadist, masochist. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, wait, hold on, because I remember this. Right? <laughs> I have gotten so used to saying the acronym. I, I know, did you, like, what's the anymore? word? What it stands for? Okay, now we're all being bad at this. Yes, I remember the S and M for sadomasochism. A bondage, bondage. Bondage, bondage, yes. <laughs> Okay, see, and I'm not even doing this looking at Google. I'm trying to go yeah. to the so bondage, B, D, D, I forgot what the D is. Dominant. Dominant. Right. Yeah. yeah. So BDSM is a whole wide variety. Right. It, it is. So it is. It rope is. play, there's yes. breath play, which is yes. like some people who like to be choked during sex. Yeah. Uh, there are people, and the thing with B, with the whole community is that there is a huge level of consent. They yes. talk about yes. consent all the time. And yes. that's why the one of that particular community for me is so fascinating because they're taking these conversations and they're having them very openly. Yes. And this is one of the few communities where you can ask those questions exactly. and they don't clam up on you. <laughs> exactly. And the and a lot of people don't realize is that the person who's considered the submissive actually has the most control. Because yes. Nothing can be done without their consent. And yeah. they have the control, right? 100%. <laughs> see, see, I love this conversation. And, 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 and this is something that I think as coaches, we should equip ourselves to understand so that we can have these conversations with different people who are interested in it who want to explore it yeah and to understand how this component of their life might be impacting other components now you got me thinking all right y'all so you're going to hear it here on real talk like <laughs> we may have to partner because I want to create a coach certificate class for sex and intimacy coaching. I love yeah. it. I, I love think, it. I think we need to have a class on this because I it, think it this like you said this is about the whole person. Yeah. It and is. articulating what you want in sex is one of the things that particularly women have been told yes. we're not supposed to do. Yes. We don't care about sex. Yes. Get it done. Get it. I got laundry to do. But yes. for most of us, that's not the truth. No. We love sex. And if you do it right, I will literally cook you dinner. Like, if you <laughs> make me okay. happy, I will make, I will make you make me <laughs> yes. You don't have to ask me to make a sandwich if you're putting it down right. You know, you don't have to tell me to get in the kitchen. I'll meet you there. You know? <laughs> I can't. I wasn't expecting this. I love it though. <laughs> yes. I think it's fine. <laughs> so I oh think there's so much language around sex that we, as a heteronormative, yeah, patriarchal society, yeah, don't have the language around, and we don't have the confidence to voice what we want. And men struggle too because they, I'm supposed to be this dynamo in the bed, exactly. And they're like, but nobody showed me how, so I'm just gonna jackhammer yeah. until one of us is happy, right? Exactly. Like <laughs> Usually not her in those yeah, right. situations. <laughs> And, and, and you're right. And I think you make a really good point with that because we don't have language around this. And so if a woman voices her opinion, then usually 
the, the, the partner feels deflated, especially if you talk about a male female type of relationship, because our society being what it is, you know, then the man feels like, well, there's nothing wrong with me. It must be something wrong with you. And then he right. gets upset. And but see, and that to me is where it may have to go to therapy, right? Because then right. that starts to get into the clinical. But if we can get involved early, where we can help people have language and conversations, if that's what they want, then I think that this will be a useful tool for us. And something just hit me as I'm talking with this. Because you just mentioned how it's about a confidence thing and a lot of us lack the confidence to have the conversation. But couldn't you imagine if you get really confident in talking about sex, that's going to make you confident about talking about anything. Yes. Think about that. If you exude, so this is something I ask. I I ask my clients when when or if, because I don't push the conversation. They feel fine. Right. Fine. I'm totally fine. But for my clients who are like, I don't know who I am, Mm. you know, in in a relationship or out of a relationship, you know, my sexual identity changes based on my relationship status. True. Okay. So understanding who do you find sexy? Who, when you look at some, who look at a celebrity, who do you find sexy and why? Right. What about them gets your heart a flutter, right? right? For me, I love Okay, I love Rihanna, love her so much because <laughs> she's so unapologetic about who she is and what that she wants. True. She really true. embraces that. And I love the way she communicates with full confidence. Yes, she does. She believes in. Yes, and she, she does. doesn't feel the need to back down and smooth feathers for the people who are uncomfortable. She's just like, yeah, this is what I am. This is what I like. And deal with it yes yeah and And you don't justify it either I I don't justify myself to you right I find that so sexy like I find that incredibly sexy like the way a woman walks I think it's sexy. Oh my gosh. Look, switch <laughs> the hips. Yes, girl, get it. I'm here for you. I'm cheering you on. Thank I you. Love it. I so, love it. Realizing that finding people sexy or sex doesn't actually have to do with sex. sex. So it doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> and that's a whole yeah, and, that, and that's another thing that people don't understand either is the difference between arousal and desire which is also two different things, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So all of these things come into play that I feel like we as coaches can help our clients understand, better understand themselves right? Mm -hmm. and have these deep conversations. And I am a firm believer that if you can develop confidence around this, it's going to change how your confidence grows in other places. And with that being said, so... One other question I really want to talk about, because we this is really good, and I, and I want to just talk a little bit about what are some of the main challenges you've seen with your clients around, like, being sexual, um, talking about sex, or, or being intimate. Do you have any examples or thoughts or anything that you could share with us around how you've helped them in this area? Okay, so this is going to sound, I find that the biggest conflict is themselves it's them. okay it's it's how they view themselves or how they view sex and okay. I find that a lot of it comes from outside of themselves mm. authority figures mm-hmm. it's pornography it's mm-hmm. you know it's movies that just contain sex right and it really informs this unrealistic expectation about what sex is supposed to be like and so they've got all of these beliefs around sex already whether or not it's really what aligns with them and so I find that the biggest hurdle is getting over them their own preconceived notions about how they should feel and how it should look Mm -hmm. and I think um, overcoming their own mindset Mm. has been the trickiest thing and making sure that we're not internalizing shame mm. for the, I don't really know if there's a right reason to internalize shame around sex, but if there is one, but like making sure that we're not internalizing shame for the wrong reasons. Got you. No, right? I, I totally understand what you mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think that's the biggest thing. And also there's a sense of discomfort 
mm-hmm. when we're talking about sex because it is taboo and they want to talk about it, but they're nervous. And so some, and that's another part of running up against themselves, right? They'll kind of leave parts of the story out and you as a coach have to be kind of a detective about it yeah. and really hear what they're not saying as much yeah. as what they are saying. Agree. Agree. You know? Agree. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what are maybe three tips that you can share with coaches who are interested in coaching around sex and intimacy? Any tips you have? I, yes. I mean, practically active listening. I mean, I know we're coaches and active listening is kind of part of the job, yep. but when it comes to sex, I find that people will be a little more slippery about Mm -hmm. it when they're uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And I have a policy with my clients that I'm going to call you out on your bullshit. I am going to call you out. What? Did y'all hear Did y'all hear coach Joy? Does does that not sound like me? They're like, I'm going to call you out on your bullshit. I say that all the time. Okay. I'm sorry. You got me excited. You have to. I do it. You have to. You have have to. to. You've got to hold them accountable. Yeah. And the thing is, is as a coach, that's going to feel uncomfortable the first couple of times you do it. Yeah. It's going to be awkward because you're going to be like, well, I want to respect your story and I don't want to make you say yeah. anything you don't want to. However, I cannot accurately look at the full picture when I'm missing pieces of the puzzle. That's right. And this part doesn't make sense with this part. How did you jump from A to D over here? There are some steps missing. Take me back, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> so you've got to be a detective. You've got to be a listening detective. You do. Um, yeah. I think the other part I, a massive part about it is the coach. What do you feel comfortable with? And knowing mm. your own limitations and working through it. You are your own best client in a way yeah. on this project. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's more like, I need to understand why I feel this way. If I have any sexual traumas, if all of that stuff matters. Cause when yeah. you're coaching somebody on sex, you got to you cannot let your own bullshit distract you. you from what Thank you're working you. on. Yes. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. So coaches, do you hear that? If you have a hangup about sex, you have to first get rid of your own hangups. You yeah. have to be free and open to explore in order to help your clients explore their own ideas and beliefs and thoughts. And that's true. That's true. And unfortunately, a lot of us have a lot of hangups about sex. We, we do. do. We do. And you know, I I cater specifically to BIPOC community, you know, I, if you're mixed, it doesn't matter if you're black, indigenous, brown, that's fine. But it's a similar shared trauma there that we all kind of understand. And there's language that I find we don't code switch. (laughs) You know what I mean? We feel comfortable being really authentic about what we talk about in our homes with somebody who looks like us. And so I find that with sex and within the the black community, we have some hangups around like queer identity and homosexuality and things like that. And so if you're not comfortable discussing those kind of things, whether it's based on your religious beliefs or Mm -hmm. just something that you don't fully understand, you have to ask yourself, can I do this? Because you, it will be really hard to get a client in front of you and they saying, I'm struggling with understanding my sexual identity and how to explore that safely. Yes. Can you do the work to become comfortable to talk about it? Can you do the research? Are you willing to talk to people? I think understanding sex theories and doing your research is equally as important as doing the research on yourself, if that makes sense. No, it makes a lot of sense. I'm I'm definitely, 100% it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely, those would definitely be the tips is just like, understand yourself and your own hangups, you know, really doing your research and being an active listening detective. And you've Mm -hmm. got to apply that to like, the whole story. That's really when you as a coach take a backseat, your feelings take a backseat and you really become vulnerable and authentic with your client because okay. you expect that from them. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Perfectly said. Um, again, everybody know these, these <laughs> sessions go by too quickly for me. Um, and this was really a good one. 
And I'm really serious. I, I really do think that we need to come up with a sex and intimacy coaching program. And I'm on it, y'all. I'm on it. And I'm gonna make sure we yes. get the CTEs for it too. <laughs> I, I think this is really important. And, and it just keeps like, as we're talking about this joy, it keeps coming to me that this is about the whole person. And it as is. coaches, you know, even though you may have a niche and you might specialize in a particular type of coaching, we do have to look at our clients as a whole person. Yeah. So go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, no, I was like holistic coaching. If you're going to coach, you know, holistic, it's important to look at the whole, the whole person and really understand that we are ourselves at all times. And yeah. it's just understanding which part of the self you're dealing with. And that's why I do shadow work. Carl Jung's theories and psychologies behind the different aspects of the self yeah. makes sense, especially when it comes yeah. to sex and intimacy. We repress things, we ignore things. Yep. And if you want to be honest about it, authentic, I think being authentic is the true key to intimacy. You cannot be intimate without being authentically you. Yep. Agreed. No, 100%. 100%. And, 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 Again, these these sessions go by too quick. And I, I would love to have you on again. Yeah. Um, this was an amazing conversation. I, I do hope that we get more coaches who are bold, who want to get more into this work um, and, and understand that, um, yeah, we could do some marvelous work in this area when we free ourselves to have this conversation. So you guys, don't, don't be surprised you see a coach training program about this. Um, Joy, any closing words you have for the listeners? I think my best advice is to trust yourself. You know, if you're ready for it and you know, if you want to do it and don't force yourself to talk about sex and intimacy, make a partnership, refer them out, but yep. trust your gut. You know what you're doing. Yep. Thank you. Best that's yes. Coaches, you hear that? You know what you're doing. And that's it. Y'all hear me say it all the time. Trust just trust your instinct. Yeah. <laughs> I, this was great. Uh, again, I want to thank you, Coach Joy, for being on here, um, for, for sharing your openness, for being your authentic self. This was so much fun. And uh, everybody, please make sure you like, you share, you follow. Um, this was a great conversation. We hope to have you on again um, for some future conversations and maybe we'll come and talk about a particular, maybe we'll talk about some BDSM. Let's go talk about that a little bit. <laughs> so I, I know we got people I, picking that up. I know we, we got people yeah, picking that up right now, right? So we, we might have to come in and we're going to talk about BDSM. Whole, you guys, I'm telling you, there's a whole subculture. It's big, yeah. yeah if yeah. you have the ID channel, by the way, if you have any parts of the ID channel or yeah. Hulu, there's an excellent documentary about sex for sale Ooh. and financial dominatrix. And oh my God, it is literally the tea. It's so uh -oh. good. Uh oh, y'all heard that. Now, what did I get on Hulu or ID, right? Yeah. Yes. The channel. Okay. And sex for sale. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's called sex for sale. You will know it when you see it. It's just like, oh, obviously, this is, this is. <laughs> This okay. Okay. <laughs> so, so we, we will definitely be looking into this. And Thanks. so for having okay. me on. It's a pleasure. I had so yes. much fun today. Yes, awesome. And again, everybody, thank you for listening. We love you. Go out there and create awesome sauce for yourself and for others. Mm -hmm.